about was the use of cell phones with a population that was uh, not literate. Yeah. Uh, and so, I, I, I mean, as an example of extreme science yeah. uh, and, and giving people that didn't have a scientific background or the, the, the capacity to read to engage in citizen science, can you walk me through how that came about and, and how you tackled that? Okay, so so the the whole principle is that we were looking for devices that would allow us to do the work that uh, Jerome Lewis has carried out in the Congo Basin and to work with non-literate communities and allow them to collect the data. The problem is that the devices that he, was in, he used in the past were very expensive, about two and a half thousand dollars and even more because they were rugged uh, military-like devices. And if you back up, you, can you explain the research that he was trying to carry out? Yes, it, it was... Actually, he was doing research on uh, language and sound and all kind of other things about resilience of hunter-gatherer communities. But then, because of uh, sustainable forest uh, council accreditation, um, that kind of aspect, uh, there was a need to take care of the indigenous population and the, the uh, resources. So they were asked to do some mapping. And then because of problems with the maps that were just paper maps and identifi identification of locations, he started thinking about using some devices that can be used. Okay, so go ahead. And then, the, so what, so what happened with the development of the devices was that the next generation of those devices needed to be developed, and uh, we wanted to find better ways of doing that. So the fact that it's called a smartphone is nice, but we don't care much about that. We were interested in a device that is robust enough, capable of witness, uh, withstanding the environment, and providing autonomy and all the rest of it. And it's a very nice handheld computer that can be used for these purposes. And because it's mass produced, the costs go down. So instead of now being two and a half thousand dollars, it's about 200. And you had to redesign dis design the user interface to make it usable. Exactly. So a lot of the effort is actually to change completely the user interface and, and uh, turn the phone into a device that is suitable for a non-literate user. So, and, and you use that in your talk as an example of how you can use devices like that or just use uh, you know, some really in inventive, innovative thinking to allow anybody along the spectrum of education to be an engaged, collaborative uh, citizen scientist. Yes, and, and one of the interesting aspects here is that the phone is, is, is a scientific instrument. So the location that it takes is from GPS, the time that it takes is from, sometimes you can take it from the GPS or from the network, the uh, picture that it takes is as an image, and the sound is recorded with a timestamp, all these kind of aspects are aspects that you can relate to a location, a place, a time, and they are making the observation more valuable. Right. And you've used the same technique, uh, you were talking about uh, noise mapping in London, right? Mm -hmm. Um, that was in, in slightly different application where the application was developed not by us but by uh, another group as part of a European project and we included in the design of the application also not just to have the measurement of the noise but also the uh, perception and the emotional response to it. Do you find it calm or do you find it hectic? Do you find it social or do you find it alone? Do you feel that it's man-made or natural noise? And allow people to record also what they feel about the information. So just like with the work that was done on the paper, uh, we value the, um, the use of qualitative and perceptual information. So where do you think this goes uh, as, the, as the phones get better, as you get better at thinking through how to engage citizens in citizen science? What, what's the next step for you, do you think? The next step is actually to have something robust that can be used in different cases. We're actually approaching it with uh, an 
iterative and a very careful approach to it. So although we will release the uh, software and the uh, information, the software itself as an open source, we are still developing it until we feel that it's well enough and we stand behind it to, to release it and to have other people helping us. The same thing is about the way that we are developing the, the technology itself. So once it's the application is developed and we feel that it can be used by the hunter-gatherers, it will be used for a period of time, then it will be used with other communities and extended slowly. Okay. So carefully. Yeah. It with a lot of sensitivities and with a lot of empathy to the collaborators uh, and to the people that work with us. Mm -hmm.